we're talking about this and, and how everything starts with the foot. I mean, it's all about running form, but everything starts with the foot. And I know you've talked a lot about how your foot is kind of the starting point for that good running form. So you can continue on what he was saying, but that answers that question as well, I guess. Yeah, to tag on just what the original question was about how someone kind of new to this would adapt and how, how do we do that, I think to tag on to Danny's kind of explorer analogy, uh, I think it was one of the Portuguese explorers said to, you know, to discover new places, you have to lose sight of shore for a little while. So I think uh, all of us are trying to, to get people to kind of just trust it, you know, learn, sense, uh, trust your body, what it's telling you. But, you know, it, it could take a little while, and but you'll, you'll find the place. And um, a collaboration which is kind of developing now is uh, Jay DeSherry, Danny Dreyer, and I are actually trying to, to teach a, a pretty uh, a hard-to-teach group uh, culturally as the U.S. Air Force uh, and, and all the military uh, forces have to pass a physical fitness test, and they all hate it because they are trying to uh, warrior mentality through this. You know, they're trying to fight and to pass their, their you know, as we talked about in our workshop this morning, running is in, in the yin, yin and yang, it's the yin, you gotta relax. And a lot of folks before they can even transition to proper gait, and gait training is, is the work that Jay DeSherry does, is understanding kind of that chassis issue, all the core issues. You know, if you have a specific dysfunction, you can't stand on one leg, you know, so, so as a running retailer, going back and, and later this, uh, today we'll kind of do some of this stuff, but that pre-assessment, even before we teach gait, and in a store, as is, is a lot of your customers walking in, have all kinds of different dysfunctions, which aren't rocket science to, to figure out and help identify and give some corrections, and then they could learn shishim. Um, but about the foot, so the question kind of going back to the foot, and I think understanding the foot and how it works in the right position, you know, so if you look at the foot, you know, if you look kind of just in archaeology, you know, and you look at an arch, you know, look at the, go to Rome and, and see how a bridge is supported. An arch is supported by its ends, correct? Sure. Yeah, that's how an arch is supported. You could bear thousands of pounds, you know, millions of pounds if, if the arch and the keystones are all in the right place. So if you look at how a weightlifter who's uh, squatting a thousand pounds is standing, you know, they're flat to the ground and, their weight, and the weight is completely on their column and on a specific part of the rear foot. It's called the sustentacular tali. It's designed to bear weight. It's designed to bear weight. And in running, we're doing the same thing as we are, no kidding, weightlifting. You're always landing under that, right under your center of mass, under that rear foot component, you know, in a nice flat position, but your weight is going right through that part of the foot designed to bear weight. As soon as you elevate a heel up on a shoe, what you've done is you've, you've shifted it even just a little bit. You've shifted the weight off of that critical structure. You have the two ends of the arch. You've got to have a, a, a very strong and aligned big toe. If your big toe is not aligned correctly, if you have a deformity and you can't balance off that big toe, and if your heel's not in the right position and the weight's not going through that right position, your foot doesn't work correctly. And it does not work, uh, you know, we get about 50%, probably Irene or Jay could give us the exact number on this, you know, for running the, we lose energy. You know, we can't create energy. We lose energy with strides. And you want to try to lose as little as possible by recreating, you know, elastic recoil. So if you look at the foot and Achilles and the iliacus and psoas, these muscles that are these nice springs, these nice rubber bands, they have to be at the right tension to give you that return. So if your heel is elevated, you know, your foot's not in the right position, you're hitting the ground, you gotta push. You can't get that. Watch like Halligaber Selassie run. There's some really great videos just watching him from the rear. And his foot just rolls right over. You know, and if you were if he walked into a running shoe store, they'd say, You need a motion control rear foot device shoe. His like his ankle is on the ground, but his core and his alignment is perfect. And he's just loading the spring. You know, he's just he ain't using any energy. He's just phew, right off the ground. So you know, the document that we posted on the runningfront.com, you know, goes through about 12 pages of this, but in a, in a way that, read it slowly, reread it. You know, as a retailer, you can understand how the foot works. It's not that complicated. Um, and then you can actually explain things to your customers. And, and the acid test I have everyone kind of do themselves is get flat all day. So we have these, you know, our lives are 16 hours of sedentary activity combined with one hour of intense exercise, and we're in dysfunctional shoes all day that are shortening our heel cords and plantar fascia. Then we go try to run, maybe, and you're running in a Newton or a Five Fingers. You're running in a correct shoe, but everything's starting to hurt because all day you're shortening things. So get flat. If you can't, you know, go to work barefoot, get a shoe that's completely flat to the ground with as much proprioception as possible. So not flat and thick 
flat and skinny, skinny, skinny. But I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess, uh, Zola, from your point of view, obviously you uh, ran barefoot for many years, uh, now you run in shoes, but talk about, I guess, as a, as a runner, um, both training and, and, and more racing, I guess, how the foot plays into the ability to run um, fast and efficient uh, in, in those kind of settings, and kind of how you can incorporate that now. I mean, I'm sure you're still interested in how your foot interacts with the ground now. Um, I think the whole, when you start running, it, it starts at, at the foot. Um, if your foot muscles are strong and developed, then your whole body posture will be will be the same way. And um, um, when when I was younger, we trained in a group, and we probably had about 20 girls in in our school running. And out of those 20 girls, we had about 10 who could run a, a 4:30, uh, 1500. So we had a really strong um, r training group, and all of us ran barefoot. And um, we never did any um, training drills or anything. It was just naturally. Um, and I think um, looking back at it now, um, um, looking back at um, some other South African runners, we had a, a sprinter who ran, I think, 1101 barefoot as well, and a, a 400 meter runner who could run 51 seconds, a woman for a barefoot uh, in 400. Um, our first South, the first South African woman, I think, who broke two minutes in the 800 ran barefoot. So I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I. Um, and it's it's just something that's that's naturally that that just naturally developed and um i think for me the reason why i enjoy running barefoot and why i i found it so much uh, easier running barefoot than running with shoes is i knew exactly where i was i knew where my arms were i knew where my feet were where my my whole body proprioception i'm really bad at that um i fall over most of the time but while i'm running barefoot i know exactly what i'm doing and 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 I'm, I'm always in touch with my body. I know exactly what's, what's happening in, in my body while I'm running. And I think not even thinking about sprinting or form draws or anything else, I think it's just that knowledge that you learn your body so well and you know exactly in the morning when you get up um, um, how you're going to feel today and, and what's happening in your body. I think that's a, that's a big advantage for people running in barefoot or actually just getting to know your body.